A professor at MIT has just figured out how to add the equivalent of enough power for 3.3 million homes simply by changing the software on the world's wind farms. This is genius. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans. Wind energy is it's going crazy and getting that little bit of extra power from the world's current wind farms would actually go a long, long way. An assistant professor at MIT has found out how to boost the world's wind farms by 1%, which would provide enough extra energy for an additional 3.3 million homes. Michael Howland was in his office at MIT watching real-time data from a wind farm 7,000 miles away in Northwest India when he noticed something that was kind of strange. Some of the turbines weren't producing the expected amount of electricity that they should. Howland, the Est and Harold E. Edgerton Assistant Professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering, studies the physics of the Earth's atmosphere and how that information can optimize renewable energy systems. To accomplish this, he and his team develop and use predictive models, supercomputer simulations, and real-life data from wind farms, such as the one in India, and now, with the improvements in artificial intelligence, well, we're going to see more and more of these kinds of amazing improvements in renewable energy efficiency. The global wind power market is one of the world's most cost competitive and resilient power sources in the world. The Global Wind Energy Council reported last year, the year 2020 saw record growth in wind power capacity thanks to a surge of installations in China and the United States. Yet, wind power needs to grow three times faster over the next 10 years to address the worst impacts of climate change and achieve federal and climate goals in the US. Optimal wind design, optimal wind farm design, and the resulting costs of energy are dependent on the wind, Howlin said. But wind farms are often cited and often designed based on short-term historical climate records. Howland and his team, they came up with a model that predicts the power produced by each individual turbine based on the physics of the wind farm as a whole. The model can inform decisions that may boost a wind farm's overall output. As Howland was sitting there, he was trying to explain the strange data he saw coming from this wind farm in India. Based on sensor feedback, wind turbine software-driven control systems constantly change the speed and the angle of the blades and what's known as yaw, the orientation of the giant blades in relation to the way the wind is blowing. Existing utility scale turbines are controlled greedily, which means that every turbine in the farm automatically turns into the wind to maximize its own power production. Sometimes you might see a wind farm and you see some, some turbines doing different things to others. All of them are actually interconnected and changing what they do based on what the wind is doing. Though the turbines in the front row of the Indian wind farm were reacting appropriately to the wind direction, their power output was all over the place. Not what we would expect based on the existing models, said Howland. These massive turbine towers stood at 100 meters tall, about the length of a football field, with blades the length of an Olympic swimming pool. At their highest point, the blade tips lunged two meters into the sky. Then there's the speed of the blades themselves. The tips move many times faster than the wind, around 80 to 100 meters per second, up to a quarter or a third of the speed of sound. Using a state-of-the-art sensor that measures the wind of, using state-of-the-art sensors that measure the speed of incoming wind before it interacts with the massive rotors, Howland's team saw an unexpectedly complex airflow effect. He says the data showed quite remarkable wind conditions stemming from the effects of the Earth's rotation and the physics of buoyancy that you don't always see. Traditionally, wind turbines operate in the lowest 10% of the atmospheric boundary layer, the so-called surface layer, which is affected primarily by ground conditions. The Indian turbines, Howland realized, we're operating in regions of the atmosphere that turbines historically haven't accessed. Howland knew that airflow interactions in wind farms can persist for kilometers. 
the interaction of high winds with the front row turbines was generating wakes in the air, similar to the way that boats generate wakes in water, or a little bit like the wake when you swim. If you swim be directly behind another swimmer, you get a bit of a draft and a bit of a pull. To address this, Howland's model trades off the efficiency of upwind turbines to benefit downwind turbines. By misaligning some of the upwind turbines in certain conditions, the downwind units experience less wake turbulence, increasing the overall energy output of the wind farm by 1% to 3%, without requiring any additional costs at all. If a 1.2% energy increase was applied to the world's existing wind farms, it would be the equivalent of adding more than 3,600 enormous new wind turbines. That's enough to power 3 million homes. However, the team believes that they could possibly hit a 3% improvement. That's enough to power nearly 10 million homes. But even a modest boost would mean fewer turbines generating the same output or the ability to place more units into a smaller space because negative interactions between the turbines can be diminished. Ellen says the model can predict potential benefits in a variety of scenarios at different types of wind farms. The part that's important and exciting is that it's not just particular to this wind farm. We can apply the collective control method across an entire wind farm fleet, any wind farm fleet anywhere in the world, he said. By 2035, the average hub height for offshore turbines in the United States is projected to grow from 100 meters to 150 meters, the height of the Washington Monument. As we continue to build larger wind turbines and larger wind farms, we need to revisit the existing practice for their design and control, said Howland. We can use our predictive models to ensure that we build and operate the most efficient renewable generators possible. But with new models based on artificial intelligence, efficiency of wind farms actually could see some significant boosts. Now, there is definitely a reason for optimism. Why? Well, with the passage in August 2022 of the Inflation Reduction Act in the United States and similar acts in many other countries around the world, including Australia, there will be massive investment in domestic energy production into renewables, including, of course, solar and wind generation. This is just the beginning, increasing the efficiency of a wind farm by between 1% to 3% simply by changing the software is actually quite an amazing result. And it's the kind of thing we're going to see more and more of as artificial intelligence and smarter computer algorithms drive renewable energy into the future. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye-bye.